you are stuck in the same loop because your self-talk has been so focused on proving itself right. It wants to keep the story and beliefs that we have about ourselves as truth, no matter what, because it's what you've always known. And there's this fear of breaking out of that comfort zone, even if it's uncomfortable. We are closing out spooky season, so I thought it was a perfect opportunity to talk about fear and talk about monsters. And often the biggest monsters we are dealing with are the ones inside ourselves. Today's episode, I want to talk about the fear behind your inner mean girl. I've talked about calling out your inner mean girl. What do I mean when I say inner mean girl? It all comes back to negative self-talk. What are those words we say to ourselves that we would never say to a a friend? What are those things that we say on a regular basis to tear ourselves down? I call those your like inner mean girl thoughts. And so we're going to take the idea of calling out your inner mean girl, identifying that negative self-talk and what it's saying about you, the fear behind your inner mean girl. Starting with just self-talk, where does it come from? Your fear and the things you do to compensate for these false beliefs or fears. We have this self-talk and when we're saying these things, the inner mean girl thoughts, it's not because that person inside us is truly like a mean, a mean, mean person. It's because we're afraid. It's because a long time ago, the things that you decided about yourself or let other people dictate about you started to breed inside you. The beliefs that were never true in the first place about you being a bad person or being shy or that you're quiet, that you're not enough, that you're worthless, just whatever these thoughts, we'll go into deeper with those. But a long time ago, those things were decided for you mentally. We were taught that. We saw other people. They told us that. And at a very young age, that belief started to come into our brain. And when we hear something, especially at a young age, we see it as truth. And so that truth started to breathing within itself through negative self-talk and self-sabotage. So the self-talk supporting the self-sabotage. So when you're trying to create change and you start to say something to try and break yourself of it, It's like, no, who do you think you are to try and be different? Who do you think you are to try and break up with that? It's like we self-sabotage and we have these conversations that keep us stuck. You are stuck in the same loop because your self-talk has been so focused on proving itself right. It wants to keep the story and beliefs that we have about ourselves as truth, no matter what, because it's what you've always known. And there's this fear of breaking out of that comfort zone, even if it's uncomfortable. So you're in this zone where you're like, okay, I'm the shy person. I don't speak up in the work meetings. I don't try something different. I don't step outside the line. And it's because you've done it for so long that that's like what you know. So even if it's not who you are, it's what you've always done. So your brain tries to tell you, okay, you shouldn't do anything different. We got to stay safe. It's not that these thoughts are mean. It's that they're trying to keep you safe. But really, they're not keeping you safe. They're only keeping you stuck. I've been stuck in that loop. And I want to help you break out of it. Break out of the negative thought spiral break up with your inner mean girl thoughts and break up with that fear that is keeping you stuck in a narrative that you were never meant to be in. You're so much more than that one title. You're so much more than that one false belief about yourself. But it's really hard when you have gone decades proving yourself that, no, this is the truth. This is my truth. There's no other way. I can't be any other way. This is who I am. You want to be something different. You want to step out of there. But You have years and years of your inner mean girl thoughts telling you, you can't, you can't do it. So how can we start to break this up? Well, when you're stuck in a loop, think of it like you're a robot and you're doing everything you've always done because it's what you've always done. You haven't really questioned why. You're just kind of going through the motions and so many people do that. It's very, very normal. How can you quickly shake out of that space? Well, They've talked about neuroscience and actually creating new 
pathways for your brain to allow there to be space for things to be different than they always are. Doing something as simple as when you wake up tomorrow morning, brush your teeth with the opposite hand that you normally do. Sounds crazy and simple, right? So if you normally are brushing your teeth with your right hand, brush with the left. And basically your brain, instead of going straight into the automatic robot stage, it's like, oh, something's different here. And we can add on to that, but let's start with that first. And then maybe while you're brushing your teeth with the opposite <laughs> the opposite hand, even if it's hard, you're doing that, you're like, okay, today's going to be different. You just proved to yourself that today's going to be different because you did something different. It's small, but it's evidence that's going to support today gets to be different. Shaking up your routine is another one. So if you're used to always eating the same thing, doing the same thing, going to same places, put yourself in a new environment. Right now, it doesn't mean you need to go to some crazy like breakfast brunch in the morning, but maybe you take your breakfast instead of sitting at your office desk while eating breakfast, you take your breakfast outside. And like that small shift in environment is showing you, hey, things are different. Working in a new environment in general, you can maybe tap into some new self care or meditation exercise or activity that you've been wanting to do for a while. So, something really small like taking on a new hobby or breaking up what you normally do at the end of the day after work or in the morning that can help you prove to yourself that just because it's always been the way it has been doesn't mean it always has to be the way that it is, that it will be. Like, you're not stuck. We're not stuck here. But doing those small actions can help immediately break past that stuck feeling. So it's simple and it works. So start there. Now let's go deeper. You're like, okay, I'm starting to shake things up. I think I'm ready to go deeper. All right, let's do it. 10 out of 10 recommend coaching and therapy. Those two are great. I would love to help you. I'd love to work with you. Get the support that you need at whatever level you need. Also, you can do some inner work with journaling. Let's talk to our inner mean girl. So, all right, mean girl, let's talk. What beliefs do I have about myself? What are these core beliefs that I have about myself? Let's start with the ones that maybe are kind of negative, not the nicest things to say about myself. Just list them out. The next thing, so we're going to come back and do examples. So the next thing, what beliefs do I have about myself is when did those beliefs about myself start? How and why? Was it someone saying it to me at a young age? Was it some sort of trauma? Something happened to me? Maybe you don't know fully. Were you bullied as a kid? Did they just start? Like you heard, maybe you heard your parent, your guardian, your mom talking about those things about themselves. And then you looked in the mirror and had the same thoughts. Maybe someone called you dumb one time or when you messed up, someone immediately, like, let's say you stumbled over your words, you messed up and they're like, wow, you're so stupid. So then that became a core belief. There's so many different reasons of origin that this can come from. And if you don't know right now, that's okay. Hypnotherapy is something that can really help you kind of identify and go deeper if you are struggling to figure out where it started. Hypnotherapy helped me find a lot of things that I didn't realize. But try and do it with yourself first through meditation, through journaling. Then after you figure out kind of when it first started or timeline where it first started, ask yourself like with this statement, you can start with one. Is this statement 100% fact? Is this 100% true? Non, can't argue with it. This is a fact about myself. Yes or no? We'll come back to it again. The next question you can think is, what have I done that shows otherwise? What have I done in my life that shows that this is not always true? Maybe there's some truth to it, but it's not always true because I've done X, Y, and Z in my life. What would that be? Bust that belief, that false belief, with true examples. That is the quickest way to break up with the narrative that your brain is trying to keep you stuck in. When you can find a true example, it helps you see, oh, I'm stepping out of this. I'm stepping out of this thought bubble that's keeping me stuck here, that this is like truth regardless of anything and realizing like maybe it's just true in this instance, but it doesn't mean it's fully defining all of who I am. It's really easy to get stuck in a box of that being fully truth when really it might just be a part truth. It might just be sometimes this happens for me. So let's take some examples and then go back through this process, okay? So inner mean girl, 
what comes up for you? These are some of the biggest ones I see. Okay. This one is, I am always left out. My friends hate me. I'm always left out. My friends hate me. We're going to use that as an example. Might seem a little harsh. Nothing's too harsh. That's the inner mean girl thought. What is this belief about myself? Everyone hates me. My friends hate me. When did this first start? Well, okay, well, I was triggered when I'm always left out when I saw that my friends went to this event without me, when I saw this going on without me and I didn't get invited. Maybe when it first started was a long time ago, was bullied as a kid, and I always have this fear of rejection. So the one time I did get rejected as a kid, I thought, those people don't like me, so that means that all my friends must always hate me, even my future friends. It's like you've taken that projection that happened to you as a young kid and you've projected it into the future of every other relationship, every other friendship, friend circle going forward, and it can close you off. That's kind of like the origin story, right? Is this statement 100% fact? So I'm always left out and my friends hate me. Well, let's see. Let me look back at some things. I just went and got coffee with a friend a couple of weeks ago, and we were just talking about how much we care about each other. I just had a friend call me and check in. Like maybe we weren't able to spend time one on one, but they were calling in and checking on me. So that doesn't sound like my friends hate me. Always left out. Well, I've actually went to a dinner with some friends the other time. Maybe not every friend got to come, but I went that time. And it doesn't mean that I'm always left out. And so breaking up with, the language that we're using about that fact will again help break up with that being fact being a truth for you busting that belief with true examples that's what you're doing okay let's do one more example of this and then kind of wrap it up so hopefully you can take your example and go through the same thing sit with it listen to these examples and then try it on your own and if you have other thoughts or you want to go deeper into this this is literally what i do with my clients so we can definitely do it together this is one i have gotten from clients before when they're going through major life change, whether it's starting over a new career, breaking up, getting divorced, starting a new relationship, just completely starting over, or the desire to start a business and quit your job, the desire to break up with this person and start a new relationship, the desire to leave this friend group that's kind of toxic and try and find a new community. So here's the inner mean girl thought. I'm too old to start over. I'm too old to try something new. I'm too old to write a book. I'm too old to wear that. I don't know, whatever. This belief, okay? We're going to take that inner mean girl thought. When did that start? How or why? What triggered this? And this one, the I'm too old to start over, maybe it's not an origin that started at a young age. Maybe recently you had a birthday and you started to scroll and compare yourself to what other people were doing. You started to see and and put yourself on a timeline of like, oh, I, I'm not where I wanted to be in my career. I'm not where I want to be in my life. I have this desire to do this, but I'm too behind to, to start this business. I'm too old for this. Figure out wherever it started. It's fine. How or why did it start? Ask yourself that. Is this statement 100% fact? I'm too old to start over. It's quite a bold statement to say I'm like too old to try something new. I'm too old to start this business. I'm too old to find a partner. I'm too old to whatever. Is this statement 100% fact? Well, with this example, think about it. Bust the belief by using other people. There are other people who are older than you who have already started over. There are other people who are older than you that, that are doing it right now. You can look at examples of different people in this world that got their big break at like 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. And it lets you know that you're never too old to start over. You're never too old to hit that breakthrough. You're never too old to reach your dreams. And that can inspire you. If they can do it, you can too. I love doing this when you're getting caught up on a timeline. I have my clients do this because I've done it myself. Is look back to like when different people got their big break. When did Tina Fey like have her big breakthrough with her writing career with all the stuff like she'd been doing things for years but then went crazy crazy big breakthrough i think when she was like mid 40s there are people who don't get picked up with their writing career or they start a family or they restart a family and they find that true love and it's later on in life there's also people who can do things quickly like you you create this timeline of thinking it can only be 
one way and God, the universe is like, no, you're going to do it your way. We're going to do it the way that's best for you. And you don't need to get stuck in this timeline of thinking I'm I'm too far behind or I'm too old or I'm not enough or any of those things. And so finding examples that can help you bust through that can be helpful for sure. And then also doing something for yourself. So if you haven't done anything to prove that shows otherwise, maybe like if you have this idea so that I'm too old to start over, is there a belief below that that's like, I'm too old to try that new hobby, to go out and do karaoke, to wear that outfit, whatever. And then do that thing to prove to yourself, hey, I'm actually not too old. So do something that's outside of your comfort zone, but maybe not the full like cutting the full cutting the cord where you're completely starting over, right? So doing something small can kind of help start to build that courage and that belief beyond the false beliefs that we've created in our mind through our inner mean girl. Anytime we're taking a statement or an inner mean girl thought and it's a blanketed statement, those ones it can be really helpful to break up with. The last one I'm going to give you is a good example. And if it's something you come back to a lot, I have an answer that can work for you to kind of break out of that pretty quickly. Okay. So if you have this idea of like, I'm worthless, I'm lazy, I've never accomplished anything, like I never reach any goals, I never reach my goals, I'm never going to get to where I want to go, whatever. This this whole brrr, spiral of thoughts, right? When do those first start? When did those feelings start for you. Maybe it's you were scrolling on social media. Maybe you had a negative review from a boss or from a patient or from a client. Uh, Maybe it's when you got really overwhelmed with all you're trying to do at work. Maybe you felt like you had a goal set up for what you're trying to do and you didn't reach those goals. You're missing the mark. You're procrastinating on stuff and it's just kind of getting you in that funk, okay? So let's go through how or why that started. And then is this 100% fact? So am I truly worthless? Am I really lazy? Have I really not accomplished any goals? What have I done that shows otherwise? And so for this one, when you're in a low space, it can be a little bit difficult to pull yourself out of it sometimes if I'm feeling like I'm not making the impact I want to make in this world with clients, with community, whatever. Having a folder of the sweet, kind, amazing things my clients have said about me, about working with me, about how their lives have been impacted, the reviews that people write for this podcast of saying how it's positively impacted their life, how they feel connected to it. Those things I can easily come back to so that when I am in a lower space, it helps me immediately bust that belief of like, no, that's not true. I I have made an impact. And even if it's just on one person, you're breaking up with that core belief that's trying to keep you stuck. Same thing with goals. So if you are struggling with this huge goal that you want to accomplish and all your brain can think about is how you're not there yet, you need to remind yourself, I am working towards my goals. I am accomplishing things a little bit more every day. And keeping a list of those small wins, those small accomplishments is what really helps you break through that and keep from spiraling back and staying stuck in your old ways. I have some of my clients that have like careers, businesses, they'll keep sticky notes where they have like a win wall where they write all their wins down. And as those things come up, they're putting them on a sticky board, which is awesome. You can have wins list in your notes, on your notes, on your phone. I say visually having something where you can visually see it can be really helpful. Any kind of achievements where you're proud of yourself and you stepped into that space, having some sort of visual attachment to it whether it's an experience like when I spoke on a stage or when you got an award at work or when your kids wrote a really sweet card about how great of a mom you are or a dad you are, keeping those things at hand so that when you are feeling really down on yourself and putting yourself down, you can come back to those little reminders to to boost you back up. So that's really the process that I recommend when it comes to calling out your inner mean girl, when it comes to calling out that fear And reminding yourself that that inner mean girl isn't trying to hurt you. She's trying to keep you safe, but she's ultimately keeping you stuck. And we don't want that. It's not serving you anymore. So I want you to get confidently uncomfortable. I want you to break out of it. And sometimes it involves you going deeper. Don't just get stuck going deeper and then not do anything. Take action now. That's why in the very beginning I talked about the small things you can do to break up that day, to break out that spiral of telling yourself it can be different today by brushing your teeth with the opposite hand, by shaking up your routine, 
uh, changing your environment, doing something a little bit new. It doesn't have to be a completely life altering decision that you make today. It just needs to be something a little bit different to show yourself, hey, it doesn't always have to be the way it's always been. It can be different. I can allow change to come into my life in a positive, profound way. And it doesn't have to be scary. It can be small at first and grow from there. Thank you guys for coming here. Uh, Enjoy your spooky season. I'm looking forward to going into the holiday season. And we will be talking about a lot of exciting things when it comes to the holiday season. Maybe it's not exciting. Maybe it's stressful, overwhelming. Who knows how we feel going into the holidays. Hopefully you're feeling a little bit of joy, uh, even if you're dealing with some other things too. You are not alone. I'm here with you. And if you try any of these, let me know your process. I would love to hear from you. And I will see you guys on the next one.